Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a new video tutorial. Today I'm going to be working with Altenew's Starry Flowers stamp set and I've been invited to partake in the color therapy blog hop that Altenew is hosting. So be sure to check out my blog, leave a comment for a chance to win a $20 gift certificate or six chances for a $30 gift certificate. So I'm going to be stamping this bottom flower here. This is the one I'm going to be showing in the video and so I skipped over the part where I stamped the first one. I need to use an alcohol ink friendly ink pad. So I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black and I'm using my Mini Misty to stamp that. You'll notice I actually stamp it a few times because I wanna get a really great black crisp impression. So as I'm coloring here, I'll explain my coloring techniques a little bit later, but I wanted to give a bit of a review on the markers themselves. So this is the first time that I'm using Altenew's Artist Markers and I am really, really loving the way that they color. So the artist markers are alcohol-based markers. So if you've heard of Copic markers before or Spectrum Noir, these are exactly the same type of marker. So what I like the most about Altenew's markers is that the way that they're packaged, they come in sets of four. So you get all of the colors that you need in order to make a color blend without having to make you think about it or having to pick and choose colors, which can be sometimes the most difficult thing when you're working with alcohol markers is picking which inks are going to blend together or which markers are going to blend together the nicest. So just like Altenews ink pads that are sold in sets of four, so that it makes layering stamping easy. These are also sold in sets of four to make color blending easy when you're working with markers. They also come in sets if you were interested. They come in 12 packs, which include three of those four packs. So you can buy those four packs individually or get them as a set. In this video here, I am using Artist Marker Set A, and those include the packs of reds, greens, and blues. So what's really nice is that with the Altenew Artist Markers, they are, don't have an overwhelming amount of colors to choose from. They come in those color blends, so it's easy to blend. Now, in alternative with other alcohol inks, mo a lot of people believe that in order to get amazing coloring like the artists that they see, they have to be using the professional Copic markers. Now, I have to argue that it's not always about the marker quality. It has to do with a lot of the time the practice you put into your coloring. Just because you're buying the most highest professional quality of a marker doesn't mean that you're going to be able to create stunning images like the ones that you're seeing. It does take practice and of course it does take a certain quality of marker which the Altenew inks definitely have. I think a lot of us get a little bit out of touch with reality here that we are card makers, scrapbookers, and paper crafters for our own personal use. And we don't need to have the most highest professional markers on the planet that are designed for artists that are creating for companies and for their jobs in order to create beautiful artwork. So going back to the artist markers, they come at the moment, they have, I believe, 36 colors that are available at the moment. So not an overwhelming amount. They are a great price point in comparison to other types of professional artist markers and in my opinion the brushes on them make more sense. So on one side, the side that I'm using for most of the video, there is a brush side of it so you get the brush tip and then the other side of it is a pen tip whereas with Copics you get a chisel tip which I've never ever used. So it's kind of nice that if you're having some trouble getting those fine detail lines you can go in with the pen tip and that'll help you greatly as well and I think a pen tip is much more useful than a chisel. So that's what's nice about them as well. I like the fact that they're nice and thick so they don't hurt my hands as I'm coloring. I find that holding skinny markers for long periods of time tend to hurt my hands. I'm not getting any younger over here, so having a thicker marker really helps as well. So those are the things I really like. They blend beautifully. You don't have to think about your color choice. There's not an overwhelming amount of colors to choose from and that they really just make them a lot easier to figure out as far as learning to color. Now one of the things I have to say is that the range in between the colors, so from light to darkest, is quite extreme. But in my opinion, and that might be something that people don't care for, but they might want to have some in-between colors, but in my opinion you aren't going to get stunning images unless you have super dark cast shadows, which is what I learned in Kitten Clouder coloring classes as well as classes at Altenew. And <clears throat> those, that there, getting that really 
big difference in contrast of color is what makes your image really pop and look kind of 3D like mine does. It does take a little bit to get the blend, so I have to go over it multiple times, but it's worth it in the end. So I'm now going in with a gel pen just to add some dots for some added interest to the card. And this just helps, is another small detail that you can use for your cards. I'm never truly finished done playing. I like to go in over and over again to get my blend perfect. And you can see that when I'm, by the time I'm finished my card, for those people who think mm, maybe the four colors isn't a big enough, or it's too much of a range between light and dark, you can see how beautifully they blend by the end of my image. And it really just takes the going over it in layers to get it to really blend perfectly. Perfectly. So you'll notice what I did for the leaves is that I went in with the lightest color and I just colored them completely. And then I'm going in with the absolute darkest shade and I'm going to go ahead and add in where I think shadows are going to be. So if you think about a shadow with a leaf behind it, the flower is going to create a shower, shadow onto the leaf because one is in front of the other. So if the sun were shining on it, that's how it would be. So the way I'm working here is that the sun is shining from the top right hand corner onto my flower so you can see that the leaves are usually have the darkest color on the left hand side because that's where it would be the darkest and then I go ahead and I blend it out using the other two shades so it's all about going back in back and forth going over top of them so that they blend nicely together for the flower itself I used a flicking technique which means I just flick the marker and it creates these fine lines and fine detail lines. It's definitely something that I've had to practice and practice makes perfect and I'm definitely not even close to perfect yet. I've also listed below in the video description some fun coloring classes that might be of interest to you if you're interested in learning how to color. I would love to take you through my entire process but for the most part I've learned it elsewhere and I'm really not an expert so learning from the experts is super important and I'm not going to pretend to be something that I'm not. So let's get back to the card itself. Okay so I am going in now. I've die cut my flower. I've added some 3D foam tape on here and then I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my card. So I'm just removing the back of the foam tape and I'm going to add it onto the bottom right hand of my card. I kind of finicked around with it a little bit to see where I liked it most, if I liked it in the middle on the left hand side, but I also had to think about my sentiment and what I was going to place on the side. My colored cards, I don't know why, I always seem to make them sympathy cards and maybe it's because I've spent the most time on them and the most care and that's when I think the occasion is most important to do such a thing. So I've now stamped the sentiment onto my card panel and I'm ready to adhere it to the card base. So I'm grabbing some Tombow Mono liquid adhesive in I'm going to adhere this to my card base. So my panel measures four by five and a quarter and my card base measures four and a quarter by five and a half so I have a nice white frame around it and I used Nina solar white cardstock for both of these 80 pound for the panel and 110 pound for the card base so that's the end of today's video I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of wink of Stella in here it's a glitter pen and I just think it makes everything just look so much prettier when it's all finished and I'm going to hold it up to the light a little bit and you might be able to see some of the shimmer that occurs on the card so now that that's all finished, you can see the shimmer that is on the card, and it's just stunning when it's all finished. I hope you enjoyed my little review on the Alt New ink markers. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the blog hop that's going over on my blog because you have a chance to win a $20 gift certificate to Alt New that you can put towards the artist markers, perhaps. Also, don't forget that they're 15% off at the moment, and I have some suggested videos here for you if you want to continue watching or if you want to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon for another video.